and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful West Coast, British Columbia, the capital city of Victoria. It's great to be here. Uh, welcome, Kyber. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Uh, this is our first stream in a couple of weeks, our first live stream. So hopefully all is good. Uh, we're still setting up the studio. We're still tweaking the equipment. So you're going to have better and better streams coming up uh, in the next uh, over the next couple of weeks. So look forward uh, to that. Again, uh, this lesson is presented to you by AEHelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there, and for the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, uh, we have lots and lots of materials, videos in HD, uh, original practice exams to help you uh, improve and uh, get better at your communication, and also, of course, get higher band scores on your IELTS exam. So definitely visit us there. Yes, Kyber, it is a new shirt. Thank you for noticing. Um, so today is a speaking class. We're going to kick off live streaming here in Canada um, with, uh, with some speaking. I'm doing fantastic. Jai Neil, thank you for uh, asking. Um, and so make sure to speak and repeat. So speak and repeat. Okay. Uh, it's very, very important to uh, practice throughout, copy my intonation, my pronunciation. Uh, when you hear new vocabulary, write it down. Of course, the video is being recorded so you can review it later. Um, hi, Sabina. Nice to see more people joining in. Uh, if you hear something that's not as good as it could be, or if you find, you know, something is not um, up to expectation, let us know. Uh, again, we're uh, using a new kind of studio setup, and over the next few days, we're going to be adding new computers, new lights, uh, new uh, equipment, both hardware and software. So um, we want your feedback on these live streams. They're ultra low latency, so I can interact with you in real time. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, everyone. So uh, I'll quickly show you the websites that uh, we use to teach these lessons um, for the most part. Uh, this is our academic uh, website here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. For general IELTS, um, it's the green background. Again, you can click that big red button and join our premium package uh, with a one-time payment, get access to lots and lots of videos, practice exams, and much, much more. Um, we are British Council IELTS Registration Center, and we're trained British Council agents, so you can ask us questions, uh, and you can practice speaking for free with other IELTS students on these websites. You simply log in, click on Student Partner Speaking, and start video chatting or audio chatting. Rashika and Ali, nice to see uh, many of our members joining in now as well. That is fantastic. Let's get back to today's lesson. So today's lesson is talking about a band nine um, strategy. I did sit the IELTS a few weeks ago. We have some videos in production for that, the official IELTS exam. I did get a band nine in the speaking, so I think I have a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about when it comes to strategy uh, for speaking. So I'll guide you step by step and we'll take some examples and practice some speaking as well. Be happy. My name is Adrian. All right, everyone. So um, first question, very important. Um, when you have your speaking exam day, um, when should you go to your exam center and uh, what should you do uh, when you get to the exam center? So some of our members know the answer to this question. It's really, really important to do this. It can absolutely help your band score by at least half band to even a full band. So what should you do when you have your official IELTS speaking day? When should you go there and what should you do? Can anybody tell me that? All right. 
Uh, be happy. This tip that I'm giving you right now will greatly help you for your speaking. I did this when I did the official IELTS exam um, a few weeks back, and it definitely helped me, and it helped another person as well. So um, what should you do um, for that speaking? It's an important question. I want to kind of start with this one big tip because I know that it really helps students, and whoever has done this will tell you that it works just great. So, what should you do? Um, Ari Hari says, go there about an hour early. Yeah, I would say an hour early is a good idea. Usually the time before you're speaking passes quickly. Most students are quite nervous. So I agree, at least uh, 45 minutes to an hour early. So um, here's a big tip. Go to your exam uh, at least. 45 minutes to four. What should you do? I bet somebody um, is saying this. Kyber, yes. Kyber says, arrive early to practice with others. Yes, yes. And uh, take some speaking questions with you to practice with other students uh, who are waiting for their test. Um, this will help confidence as well as fluency. Uh, many students will do half a band score to one band score better uh, just by doing this. And don't be shy uh, when you ask somebody else. I asked someone who was just waiting, a stranger uh, at the exam center, and they were really happy. They're like, yes, that's a great idea. Thank you for asking. I would love to practice some questions with you. We did some basic introductions and it worked fantastic. So um, that's what you want to do. That's how you want to start and start with the introduction. It will give you confidence. Okay, so um, just a quick reminder here uh, that um, we'll have classes tomorrow and on Friday and on Saturday, and we'll have members chat classes for our members as well. So take note of the schedule. I believe it's also posted on our community board. Uh, let's get into a little bit of those warm-up questions that I was just talking about. So um, here it, it are the examiner's questions. So you go to your exam early, you warm up, you have to go and register. So you go into, uh, well, with COVID, they don't let you go in early. So you, they allow you to go in about 20 minutes before your speaking interview to register. Make sure you're using English throughout the whole process, okay? Uh, even if uh, the administrator is using your language, uh, they shouldn't be. Uh, but some of them do. So uh, you should only use English. Do not switch out of English once you arrive. In fact, you should be in English all day during your exam day. Okay. All right. Um, so then you register and uh, chat in English to other people who are registering there. There'll be a couple other people registering. Chat to them in English. And then um, eventually the examiner will call you. By that time, you're nice and confident. And uh, the examiner will greet you. The examiner will say, uh, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. I'm recording this for marking and administrative purposes. This is candidate number 12345. The exam is being done in Vancouver at noon. Um, and uh, now we shall begin for part one. I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Before we begin, may I see your identification? And even though you registered and showed your identification before, uh, the examiner is going to ask you again for your uh, identification in most cases. So make sure you have it ready and make sure you have a nice complete sentence to answer that question, okay? Um, yeah, be happy. You can use the words, you're welcome, be natural, be yourself. Yeah, there aren't do's and don'ts. Don't be rude, of course, don't curse. But otherwise, you can use lots of natural language. Um, even slang is okay, like wanna, gonna, okay? All right, so Kyber says, uh, yes, here's my passport, which I use for registration online. Please have a look. Uh, Kyber, you don't need the um, participle in. Okay, so, um, or sorry, the preposition. You don't need the preposition in online. 
Kyber, just registration online. Please have a look. Uh, Janiel says, yes, of course, here's my national ID that I used to register for this exam. Please take a look. Perfect. So lots of different ways uh, to answer this question. You shouldn't just say yes, sure, or yes, here it is. A lot of students do that when they're nervous, and it sets a bad rhythm for the speaking. Um, so you want to answer this in a full sentence, okay? So answer in a full uh, and fluent sentence to um, set the pace uh, for the interview. Okay, so be fluent and give a full answer. So yes, uh, certainly. Here is my passport that I used to register uh, for the exam. Uh, online a couple weeks ago. Uh, please uh, take a look. Okay. Now, these days, they don't actually take your passport from you. You show it to them. They don't want to touch it because of COVID, of course. Uh, so again, this is speaking. So make sure to speak and repeat. Uh, again, it's very, very important to speak and repeat. Speak and repeat i'm just gonna kind of go over my letters here so that they're bold font um, emphasizing the importance of that uh, so here we go um, repeat after me yes certainly here is my passport that i used to register for the exam online a couple of weeks ago please take a look okay um, all right uh, so Next question, of course, uh, they're going to ask for your name. They did this with me as well. Okay. Um, so uh, what is your full name? Again, have a nice full sentence for this. Uh, don't just say, I'm John Smith. Okay. Uh, ooh, what? Are you scared? Don't be scared. You paid good money to be there. Speak in full sentences. Okay. So Ari Hari says, my first name is Aaron and my family name is Davis. You can address me as Aaron. Um, yeah, that's okay. Uh, make it sound friendly, Ari, um, because you can address me as Aaron. Usually, we often use that when we're in a position of seniority. So uh, if I'm somebody's boss, then I can say, I'm your boss, John Smith. You can address me as Mr. John. Okay, so oftentimes we'll use that phrase from a position of seniority. Um, if we're on equal grounds or we're in a position of respect, then we'll often say, um, please just call me Aaron or please refer to me as Aaron. Okay. You can address me. It means you're giving them permission to address you as such. Okay. All right. Uh, 701, it's, um, frame, the frame rates are lower. We're going to be, again, so keep this in mind, everyone. We're improving this live stream. But this live stream, unlike many that you see, is an ultra low latency. So we only have a couple seconds delay. It makes the class a lot smoother, makes me a lot more choppy. <laughs> but if I made it the other way, if I made it normal latency, then by the time I responded, you'd be thinking about something completely different. Okay, uh, Karen says, my name is Karen uh, Lakdawala. You can call me uh, Karen, sure. All right, Isha says, hey, I'm new here. I have five band in writing. How can I improve that? Isha, go to our website, check out the writing, okay? All right, so uh, what is your full name? Here we go. Practice questions and answers, students, when you're doing speaking. So what is your full name? Uh, my... Uh, let's give, um, Christina Mercedes. Why not? So my full name is Christina Mercedes McKinley. Uh, just call me Chrissy. Okay, 
So why not? If you've got a nickname, it's totally fine. Uh, tell them what they should call you because if you don't, they will ask you, what should I call you? Okay. Uh, so here we go. Uh, what is your full name? My full name is Christina Mercedes McKinley. Please just call me Chrissy. Okay, Chrissy. Uh, so for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Uh, where do you live? Okay. So give me a nice full sentence answer for this. When you get this question of where do you live, you should think about your geographic location, like your country, your city, and you should also think of your, um, your shelter or your housing. So apartment or a uh, flat or a house or a duplex. Um, so give detailed answers and be original. That's how you get those high, high, high band scores. Okay. All right. Tahira, you're very welcome. Thanks for that feedback. <laughs> Victor, it's nice to see you in class. Thanks for that. Okay. Uh, so Be Happy says, I live in an apartment in Scarborough. Um, be happy. Be more specific. So do you live in a two-bedroom apartment, one-bedroom, studio, uh, first floor, third floor? Uh, do you live on the outskirts of Scarborough, right in the heart of the city downtown? Um, do you live by the train station? Be a little bit more specific. Use more descriptive information. Remember, students, IELTS speaking is not an ESL exam. It's not an English as a second language test. It's a proficiency test. The examiner will speak to you the same as if they were speaking to a native speaker. Okay, because sometimes they are, like with me. All right. Um, Faizan says, I live in Peshawar City. I have been living there for the last 15 years. It's a beautiful city with lots of industry. Uh, Faiza, nice. I like your use of present perfect, uh, progressive. That's great. Showing some uh, complex or more advanced grammar is a good idea. Uh, Faiza, include where you live, in a house, apartment. Okay, so a little bit more. Um, Govin says, I live in Nagpur, which is in the central part of India, and I live uh, nearby the airport in a one-bedroom flat. Okay, uh, Govind, you don't need to say, I live in a city named. Um, it's, it's awkward English. You wouldn't actually say that naturally. Okay. 701 says, oh, Tashkent, Uzbekistan. <laughs> um, 701, uh, more information. Okay. Details. Details, details, details. Okay. All right. Make sure to add details. It's super important. Um, even if you're really fluent and you have great English, if you're not going into details, then um, you're not going to be able to get the highest band scores, okay? Um, so give details. Uh, Rashika says, I reside in a two-bedroom apartment on the second floor of a four-story building in uh, Richland near the Columbia River state of Washington, which is located on the Pacific Northwest of America. Um, yeah, Rashika, you're quite close to me. We're very, very near each other now. I'm in BC, you're in Washington. We're neighboring uh, regions, of course, as you know. So where do you live? I live in a two-bedroom uh, uh, apartment on the 11th uh, floor of a modern building with my lovely a city British Canada okay uh, so there's my answer, and that is where I am now. All right, um, here we go. So repeat after me again when you're practicing. It's really important that you practice questions and answers. The questions are important because that will make you much more responsive and reflective uh, when you hear questions. So repeat after me. Where do you live? I live in a two-bedroom apartment on the 11th floor of a modern high-rise building with my lovely wife and daughter near the Pacific Ocean in a, the beautiful city of Victoria, the capital of British Columbia, Canada. Okay, so lots of descriptive language, all right? 
And uh, the next question, okay. Uh, what do you like about it? So, um, Navkaur, what do you like about living in Talwandi? Uh, be happy. What do you like about living in Scarborough? Um, Saved, what do you like about living in Jaffa? Okay. So, Kyber says, the aspect I love about where I reside is that um, the air is free of pollution. There's a lot of greenery, uh, which is, of course, good for my health. I enjoy breathing the fresh air, especially in the morning after waking up and going outside. Uh, okay, Kyber, good. I made a few corrections, so take note of that. Okay, it's important. Um, pay attention to your word order and phrasing, Kyber. Okay, a lot of attention to that. Keep practicing. Go back and notice how I made it uh, more natural. Okay. Hi, Dhruv. Hi, Mira Alisher. Mark Salilov. I hope I'm pronouncing names more or less somewhat accurately. Okay. Soul Hacker says, I admire the beauty of this city also. I don't know if you said something before, Soul Hacker. And I didn't see that, but it's a good finish. You don't need to retract it. Salva says, I live in the southern part of India, which is Tamil Nadu, one of the best countries to live in with uh, beautiful seasons and perfect weather conditions uh, for all residents, all of the living beings. A little bit awkward English. Okay. All right. Gungser says, to be honest, I don't like where I live now. I want to live in Germany, which is not polluted. Okay, um, careful with that, students. So even if you don't really like where you live, there must be one or two elements uh, that you do enjoy, maybe some good food, or the company, your family, your friends that live there. Uh, focus on that. Try not to um, twist your answer from the question. So uh, don't go into a negative, even if that's your stronger feeling. It's better to go with the flow of the question. Usually leads to um, more coherence and higher band scores. Okay, everybody got that? If you got that, give me a thumbs up. Um, it's difficult to answer in negatives and get a high band score. So um, if uh, uh, the examiner asks you like, um, uh, how often do you ride a bicycle? I don't like bikes. Okay, where do you go from that, right? So you don't want to close um, the uh, questions, even if it's the truth. Uh, you want to just kind of come up with, well, I rarely ride bicycles. The last time I had been on a bike was probably when I was 12 years old. Um, these days I'm more into driving my car, just walking to where I need to go. So even then you want to answer in a positive kind of way, okay? All right, so that's what you want to do. Okay, so some nice answers. Um, what do you like about it? Well, Victoria, there's definitely lots to like about it. Um, I uh, the beautiful, the amazing, because I've used beautiful, um, and I don't want to repeat that. The vistas uh, that surround the city. I can see the uh, Olympic mountains as well as the uh, Strait of uh, Juan de Fuca. At times, I can even see killer whales and bald eagles. I enjoy all of the flowers and greenery in the city. Uh, Victoria is internationally recognized as the city of gardens. Just yesterday, I took a lovely stroll through famous uh, Beacon Hill Park. Okay. All right. Um, so, 
Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, again, repeat after me. So um, here we go. Let's go from this, the top here. So you get the flow of the conversation. Uh, where do you live? I live in a two bedroom apartment on the 11th floor of a modern high rise building with my lovely wife and daughter near the Pacific Ocean in beautiful Victoria, the capital city of British Columbia, Canada. Okay. Well, what do you like about it? I love the amazing vistas that surround the city. I can see the Olympic Mountains as well as the Strait of uh, Juan de Fuca at times. I can even see killer whales and, uh, e and bald eagles. I enjoy all of the flowers and greenery in the city. Uh, Victoria is internationally recognized as the city of gardens. Just yesterday, I took a lovely stroll through famous Beacon Hill Park. Okay. So again, showing lots of fluency, do not over speak, do not go off topic. That's really bad. You have to find the right rhythm and the right amount to say. Now, often students will say, how much is that? So how much should I speak? Okay. Uh, give a complete answer. And most of the time, 90% of the time for the questions, you should think answer explain example i say that every class but it is the way to get that high band score okay so uh so far we've done the introduction and a couple of points that i've emphasized tip one be original and include uh, details okay don't try to be super unique as this can get you into a sticky situation with um, vocabulary and grammar. Just be original. Okay, so being original um, doesn't mean that you are being really unique. Uh, it just means that you don't sound like all of the other people. It do, you don't sound like you watched way too many YouTube videos and tried to memorize uh, a whole bunch of sentences to use. Okay, so be careful about that. Uh, be original. Okay, and tip number uh, this first tip is um, I already gave you a tip beginning there, showing up to the exam early and finding someone to talk to. Um, so tip number three is um, always uh, be thinking answer plus explanation uh, plus example, okay? So that's kind of what I'm doing here um, with uh, I enjoy all of the flowers. Victoria is internationally recognized. Just yesterday, I took a lovely stroll. So I'm giving an answer, explanation, example. Uh, Gungsir, you're right. You do have to wear masks. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, when you're giving your answer, you pay attention to, and some of our regular students know this. So, and this is a little bit different than your usual um, everyday conversation. It is IELTS, so you're there to show your maximum level of English. So when you're giving your answer to a question, what should you pay attention to? How can you help to in increase your fluency? Okay, this will help increase your fluency. Okay, it's very to do this and a lot of students forget to do this it's not good it's another uh, quick way to improve by half a band to a full band score so kyber says use some conjunctions that's okay yeah use some conjunctions to link your ideas but that's not what i'm thinking about i'm thinking about something else so what am i thinking about what should you do Hey, hey, Rajveer, good to see you in the class. Uh, it says use correlative conjunctions. Correlative conjunctions are good too, but um, when you're giving your answers, keep it a little bit simpler. Um, you should always use what or often use what? Yeah, exactly, Rajveer. Use the question. So use the question. Use the elements of the question, okay? So um, 
when um, it the question is, what do you like about your city? You should say, well, I really like that. Or I love that my city is. Okay, so that should be included. You shouldn't just say, oh, it's super green and people are super friendly. That's okay when you're in your everyday life in an English-speaking country, but in the IELTS, in that short 12 minutes, you really need to show more fluency, so you want to incorporate the question into your answer, okay? Everybody clear on that. If you follow that tip with the tip I gave you at the beginning of showing up early and practicing with someone else, I can basically guarantee that you're going to get a half a band to a band more, okay? All right? So... So again, um, make sure to do that, all right? Use the question. So with answers, you should use uh, of the question. Appearance. Uh, All right. Um, when you're giving the example, what should you not do? This is going to be my last question before we do a bit more practice here. Okay. So uh, I want you to use these in the next uh, practice question. So uh, when you give your example, what should you not do? Okay. And this is kind of an interesting one as well because in real life, uh, we'll do this, um, and it's okay, but on the IELTS, it usually doesn't pan out. It usually doesn't work well. Uh, Sean says, use cookie cutter uh, responses. Yeah, don't do that, Sean, but that's not what I'm thinking about. So, uh, yeah, definitely don't use cookie cutter templates. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, so Rajveer says, don't use for example or for instance. That's right. Yeah, it's it's weird to say that because normally that would be okay, but in the IELTS it doesn't work well because it's overused and it scares the examiner that the student is going into some long-winded story that might trail off topic and uh, oftentimes the examiner will actually interrupt the student when they hear that. So as soon as the student says, well, for example, the other day when I was visiting with my friends and then Sally called us and started talking about this amazing pizza that she ordered, the examiner's going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go to the next question. So don't do that. Just go right into the example. Okay. So when you give your example, do not state, and you have to practice this because it's natural um, for instead, when your example's clear, it makes sense. Okay. So here's uh, the way that I did it in my previous response. Victoria is internationally recognized as the city of gardens. Just yesterday, I took a lovely stroll through famous Beacon Hill Park. So I don't say, for example, just yesterday. I just say, just yesterday. Or I can even take out the just and say, yesterday, I took a lovely uh, stroll through famous Beacon Hill Park. It makes sense. It's clear. It gets you better band scores. You don't get interrupted. Okay? All right? Super important. Okay, follow these tips. You'll do great. Okay, so you're doing a good job. And uh, the examiner will introduce the topic of uh, part one. They'll say, let's talk about traveling. It usually comes very quickly. Uh, Michelle, uh, good luck in your exam tomorrow. Um, so the topic uh, So the question will come right away. So they'll say, let's talk about traveling. When is the last time you went on a trip? Okay. Uh, give me a nice, full sentence answer for this one. So when is the last time you went on a trip? Obviously, this is about time. Go into detail. Use clear quantitative language, numbers, okay? Numbers, clarity, all right? So Swati, it's nice to see you as well in the class, okay? 
Uh, Talha, it really depends on the question. 20, 25 seconds, sure, but it really depends on the question. Jassy says, and Jassy, I'm correcting you in real time, okay, so pay attention. Um, my most recent excursion was a trip to uh, Monali, uh, which is a great destination for holidays. There's lots of natural beauty, uh, like mountains. I went there with my friend Harpreet. Uh, we stayed there for about a week. Uh, we did some tenting and some hiking. It was great. Okay, Jassy, notice how I did a little bit more with the details, and also I reorganized uh, some of your words and word order to make that um, sound more natural, okay? Aridas Luna says, the last time I went on a trip was two years ago when I went to Munich uh, to visit my Brazilian cousins who have been living in Germany for about eight years now. I stayed with them for a couple of weeks. We had a great time. Okay, so conclude it. Students, don't forget to conclude your ideas, okay? It gives a more rounded feel to what you're saying, okay? Khalid says, it was in 2017 when I went to Saudi Arabia. Khalid, to do what? Okay, so one sentence answers will not get you the highest band scores. You need at least a couple of sentences or a nice, fluent, complex compound sentence with some conjunctions like since then or because, as a result, not only, but also. Use those conjunctions. Use those conjunctions. Prathamesh says, a year ago, I had visited Kokan uh, Beach with my family. In the summer, it was a beautiful place with uh, an abundance of greenery and lots of great food. I would love to visit there again as soon as it's possible. Mm -hmm. You're all sky. You're very welcome. Hi to you in the Philippines. Abby says, the last time I went on a trip was back in 2015. Uh, we went to Cancun, Mexico. It was pretty good. There was a really good climate, lots of people, and great parties, especially if you went during spring break, Abby. All right, uh, Faizan says, well, this is a flashback for me. It was about a year ago. Let me get you back. Lots of people responding, which is nice to see. Um, so Faizan says, well, this is a bit of a flashback for me. It was a year ago when I went uh, to Gilgit with my friends, and it was a really memorable trip. Um, you can't say, Faizan, it reminds me of flashback. Flashback is a memory, okay? So we don't use those two in combination, okay? Uh, Deep Kaur says, last year I went on a trip to uh, Shimla with my friends and really enjoyed that time. Um, we took lots of pictures. Uh, okay, activities, what did you do, right? So uh, where did you go, what did you do? That's usually the clear answer for this kind of a question. So again, answer, explain. Example, what was the trip? Why did you go? What did you do? Uh, Rajveer says, the last time I went on a trip was in 2018 when I visited Kashmir with my colleagues and friends. Uh, we did some adventure activities like paragliding in the mountains and visited uh, some of the temples there as well. Beautiful, Rajveer, very clear answer. So quantitative, I know where you went, who you went with, what you did, all in the answer, nice and fluent high band score, right? So that's what you want to do, okay? Um, so the last time I had the opportunity to do some traveling uh, was back in uh, 2019, uh, March, when uh, I went skiing in Slovenia uh, with my in-laws. Uh, we stayed for a week and not only did we hit the slopes but we also went on some hikes and enjoyed delicious food and good conversation. Okay, so uh, there's my answer. Again, it doesn't have to be the truth. Um, you don't have to be thinking about where, where you actually uh, went most recently. Just come up with a nice, uh, fluent answer, okay? 
Uh, notice again, I'm using the question in my response. So uh, repeat after me. When is the last time you went on a trip? The last time, and there I just repeat that. The last time I had the opportunity to do some traveling was back in 2019 March when I went skiing in Slovenia with my in-laws. We stayed for a week, and not only did we hit the slopes, but we also went on some hikes and enjoyed delicious food and good conversation. Hit the slopes basically means to go skiing down the slope, down the hill, okay? It is an idiom. You do want to use some complex vocabulary, some idiomatic language. Phrasal verbs are considered idiomatic uh, language as well, like I ran across my friend at the shopping mall the other week, okay? Uh, you don't have to to aggressively force vocabulary and really weird idioms that might not make sense. Be really careful about that, okay? That's super important. All right, uh, next question. Here we go, everyone. You're doing a great job, by the way. I love seeing all of your different answers. That's fantastic, and we've got lots of people in the class now. So uh, next question. The examiner will be nice and fluid with you. Um, do you like to travel? why or why not okay again give a nice complete answer so do you like to travel uh why or why not okay yeah ram you'll be able to see this video later in our um, live stream uh, videos yeah Kuiper says, yes, of course, I like to travel because it helps me meet new people and um, get exposure to different cultures and places around the world, uh, which um, allows me to have uh, open, an open mind and broad thinking. Saga says, I enjoy traveling mostly because this activity um, mentally refreshes me. Okay, careful with the way you express these complex thoughts, students. If you're not sure it's good to ask that's why you're here practicing that's great so one more time saga i enjoy traveling mostly because this activity uh, is refreshing for me mentally and spiritually this is also a way to open up to new cultures and societies uh, and try new traditions or participate in new cultural activities okay saga can you give me an example like um, did you celebrate chinese new year's in beijing which uh uh, really opened you up to some different ways to see how you can celebrate um, the turn of the year or new year. Okay. Um, Claude says, yes, of course. I love traveling because it's a lot of fun. It always helps me to uh, be refreshed and gives me energy to continue. Yeah. Um, students, be really careful with takes with this expression. So I'm going to stop here for a second and, and explain this to you clearly. Okay, so um, uh, be careful. I often see students making mistakes with this. So uh, be careful with the word uh, refresh, okay? Um, there are very specific ways. that this word is used and when you incorrect it is quite awkward okay i'm so you can practice it. so um this activity helps me to be refreshed both in body and spirit um, I feel refreshed after a cold shower. It's refreshing to take a deep clean. I get refreshed after a few uh, days. OK, 
okay? So there's a few different ways, a um, few different contexts for using the word refreshed, but be really careful. I find sometimes uh, people overuse this uh, term to feel refreshed or to be refreshed, and they're translating it from their own language or their own cultural expression, which is quite awkward in English. So be really careful with that, okay? Practice it and make sure you're using it clearly, okay? All right, so there are a few different ways for you to do that. Okay, uh, so do you uh, like to travel? Why or why not? Yes, I am an avid traveler. Cuisines. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so repeat after me. Do you like to travel? Why or why not? Uh, yes, I'm an avid traveler and I take every opportunity to explore both local and international localities uh, whenever I have the chance. In the near future, I hope to visit New York as well as Jamaica. I look forward to exploring the local culture, customs, and cuisines. Um, now here, notice that what I'm doing is I'm mixing up the order of answer, explain, example. So here I'm giving the answer, then I'm giving an example, I want to visit New York and Jamaica, and then I'm giving my explanation. So when you're practicing at home, uh, to be more expressive and more dynamic, to be a more professional communicator, to be an expert level user of the English language, which is a band nine, uh, you want to be dynamic. And this is one way that you can be dynamic is by, it's always good to use the answer first. So answer first, just so it's clear that you're on topic. But with the explanation and the example, you can kind of swap them, okay? So you can sometimes give the uh, example before the explanation. Make sure to practice that. It'll make you sound more dynamic and more original as well, okay? Try that for the next question, okay? So here's the next question. Um, and uh, see if you can do an example before you do the explanation. So um, what do you need to do when preparing for travel? So try to do this time an answer, an example, and then an explanation. See how that works, okay? So what do you need to do when preparing for travel? Give me an answer, an example, and then an explanation. Okay, so practicing being dynamic here, okay. Sumit answering for the previous, yes, I'm an avid traveler and I take every opportunity to explore both local and international localities. Okay, Sumit, so you're just reflecting uh, my response, which is fine, okay. It's a good way to practice. Make sure you say it as well, Sumit, okay. All right. Um, MSC Yanni says, I only need money. Well, I don't know. Money doesn't buy happiness. It helps, but doesn't buy it. Uh, Mohammed Azat says, I and my family usually take care to prepare well for each trip um, so that we can enjoy it to the fullest. We never forget to take our bags, refreshments, and cameras to take a lot of pictures. Okay, not bad, Mohammed. Try that example component that I was talking about. So answer example explanation, okay? Gozal says, well, I bring my necessities, such as a passport and money. Um, Gozal, uh, necessities is the noun, OK? 
Okay, so instead of necessary item, um, a more advanced vocabulary is necessities. Okay, necessities, right? Uh, Deekshaw says, before going to any place, I have to plan ahead regarding packing all of um, my belongings which are needed, such as a credit card, clothes, water bottle, phone, and so on. Deeksha, don't use and so on because that doesn't mean anything. Also, don't use the word things because it doesn't mean anything. Not really, okay? In everyday conversation, we use it, but it's useless. So for expert communication, you want to avoid those words and so on or things, okay? All right, one day I forgot to book a room in a hotel, so I faced some difficulties. After that, I reached a decision. Thus, I think it's really important to book in advance to be more comfortable and make sure that uh, there is always a place to stay. Okay, that was really good. So that was an example with an explanation. Yeah, um, so uh, there are certainly a few steps that are important prior to traveling um, a few months ago. Uh, I was um, having real difficulty finding a place to stay in Chicago because I hadn't booked my hotel. And now uh, when I prepare for travel, I make sure that I book in advance so that I don't get into these awkward and expensive situations. Yeah, that would be a good explanation followed by an example, okay? Gus says, I usually make a plan um, for an affordable destination that I want to visit. And I also make advanced reservations. These kinds of steps can help me to uh, enjoy my travels to the fullest. Gus, not bad. Don't use the word things. Students, that's an important one. Don't use the word things, okay? Things is a zero value word. You don't get any points. And you're not using words that can get you points. So don't use the word things. I see it in several of the answers, okay? Harsh says, when I go on excursions, um, I make a plan for the place. Apart from this, um, I bring with me some uh, important items, such as a charger, money, uh, and a bathing suit if I'm going to a water destination. Okay, so again, no things, no and so on. All right, that's useless. Uh, notice how several of you use the word things. So think about the examiner when they hear the word things. Uh, five times from one student and then again from another student and from 10 more students, they get really tired of that word. Okay, Rajvir says, um, I do proper planning while embarking on a trip. When I visited Kashmir, I made sure that I have pl uh, train tickets, packed some warmer clothes and my Nikon camera to capture the breathtaking views. Preparing a list of items really helps to increase the enjoyment. Beautifully done, Rajvir. Really paying attention to my advice of answering, example, then explanation, and an extra bonus point, Rajvir, for linking your answer to your previous response of visiting Kashmir. Yeah, very good. I'm gonna show you that example, and that's a great tip uh, by Rajvir with his answer that you want to link your ideas as much as possible because you will get a better band score when you do that, okay? So uh, there are certainly some important uh, steps to consider when embarking on a journey, um, especially if it is for more than a day or two. Uh, when I went uh, skiing in um, the Alps, or when I went skiing in 2019 in Slovenia, can't spell that word, <laughs> um, when I went skiing in Slovenia, so I'm linking to that answer as well, right, um, to this one here, okay. So when I went skiing in 2019 in Slovenia, I made sure uh, to uh, book my lodging well in advance, uh, as well as uh, pre-purchase uh, 
my ski pass as uh, this made the trip more enjoyable and uh, cheaper. So uh, certainly, so definitely, having your ducks in line as far as accommodations um, and activities is a wise idea. Okay, uh, so here we go, students, and I'm teaching you some um, idiomatic expressions uh, as well. Uh, repeat after me. So what do you need to do when preparing for a trip? Why? Uh, there are certainly some important steps to consider when embarking on a journey, especially if it is for more than a day or two. Uh, when I went skiing in 2019 in Slovenia, I made sure to book my lodging well in advance, as well as pre-purchase my ski pass, as this made the trip more enjoyable and cheaper. So definitely having your ducks in line as far as accommodations and activities is a wise idea, okay? Uh, having ducks in line, uh, it's kind of a cute idiom, having your ducks in line. Uh, so just think about um, the ducks when they have baby ducklings, and then you have your duck, and then the little duck, and another little duck, and another little duck. It means they're really organized, okay? Um, they've got a system, and that's what that idiom means. To have your ducks in line means you have all of the important pieces in place to make it work well. Okay, that's the definition for that idiom. Um, all right, and another way to say your hotel or where you're staying is your lodging. Okay, it's your accommodations and your lodging. So a bit of uh, vocabulary uh, there uh, for you. Okay. All right, students. So I've got a few more questions here, and you can try these on your own. Is it a good idea to plan the details of your trip before departure, why or why not? How popular is international travel in your country? What are the most popular places to visit for people? You can try these questions, record them in MP3 on your phone, send them to my email, and I'll give you a score estimate on your speaking level, okay? And we're pretty accurate. Students usually tell us that, yep, that's what they got on the speaking. So you can send your answers only in MP3, please, okay? I don't, I can't download onto our company computers, so only MP3 format. You can send them to adrian at aehelp.com. There were lots of tips for you in this lesson, and it was really good practice, and I had a great time. Streaming this lesson to you from Victoria, my hometown, where I was... Uh, raised all my life, um, and it was great to see so many of you joining in. I hope you'll come back tomorrow. We're going to have an earlier class for members uh, starting an hour and a half before, so make sure to come for that. That's going to be reading. Everybody can watch that class, and then we'll have some writing task two at the same time tomorrow, so wishing all of you a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, make sure to visit our premium IELTS courses, ahelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, ahelp.com, gieltshelp.com, one-time payment, not a lot of money for lifetime access, well worth it. We've helped thousands of students improve their band scores, so check us out there. Um, it was great. Adesina, uh, Catherine, fantastic to see you. Uh, Sanhya, Prathamesh, nice to see all of you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and look forward to catching all of you tomorrow. Much love to everyone. I'm Adrian and I'm signing out from beautiful uh, Victoria, British Columbia. Bye everyone.